Hello everyone and welcome to this Let's Play of Magic 6, The Mandate of Heaven. Uh, we're going to get right into it in a second, but uh, first um, I want to play in the intro cinematic. I'm not going to talk over that. And then we'll play through the, uh, the introductory narration as well. Then it'll drop us into character creation and I'll talk through that. And then once we get into the game, I've got to fill out some of the backstory, which isn't really established in the game, it's only in, through reading the manual that you know it, and it really sets up the introductory situation. Um, okay, so uh, let's go with the, uh, the cinematic first, and I'll be right back. They came from the depths of the void, an ancient enemy of an ancient people. No one knows why they hate us so, or why they have made war upon us. Some say the struggle against their evil is the mandate of heaven. Though their origins and purpose are shrouded in mystery, their plan is simple. They travel, they land, and then they conquer. Now, they are here on our world to do to us what they have done to so many others. And they will do it, unless someone stops them. Come with me. You have much to learn before you can deal with the likes of those monsters. Since the arrival of the devils, foul creatures and evil spirits have appeared throughout the land. Signs and omens can have but one meaning, that your destiny is part of the Mandate of Heaven. Alright, so that was the cheesy cinematic. Uh, let's go into New Game, and then we should get our introductory scroll text that uh, fills in some more of the backstory. And I'll see you on the other side for character creation. Having cheated death during the night of shooting stars, you find yourself as far from your village of Sweetwater as old Falagar's magic could take you. Three years have passed while Falagar imparted what knowledge he could to train you in your chosen professions. But the time came at last when he could teach you no more, and you have ventured into the world to seek your fame and fortune. Now, a world away from your lost home, you have stumbled across evidence of a terrible conspiracy involving a new religious cult. Five letters from King Roland to his wife Catherine, and a letter from the King of the Devils to a wicked traitor named Solman, have turned up in an abandoned goblin camp. Your fate seems inextricably bound to these letters and that awful night and your role in the events to come may be larger than anyone could imagine. The tools you have are but a small sum of gold, your wits, and a lot of potential. The roads ahead are infinite, and all the choices are yours to make. So choose wisely. Good luck. Okay, we're going to create our own party here rather than quick start because I've got a few ideas uh, that I want to do. Uh, we've got six classes in this game, Knight, Paladin, Cleric, Archer, Sorcerer, and Druid. 
and even though it's been a while since I've played this game, I remember that the uh, the melee classes are really not that as, as, quite as useful as the magic classes. So we're going to change these up a bit for, for starters. Uh, well, maybe we'll keep the paladin there. The paladin can cast. Uh, we definitely want to get rid of the archer, though, I think, to, to a druid or something like that. Um, okay, so we've got um, skills to choose. We've got stats to choose. Um, all right, let's figure out the skills first. Now, each um, class can, can uh, access different ones here, and we've got a couple that are fixed. So we're going to fill out basically two... Um, available uh, class slots per, uh, per character here. We definitely need someone who can identify. Uh, we better make that the cleric. I don't think any of the others can do it. Oh, the druid can do it. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, let's give it to the cleric. We need someone who can disarm traps. Oh, hang on. Actually, we need them that none of them have uh, an armor skill, so we better make sure that they all do that. Uh, we've got leather and chain on there. Uh, I think the paladin is the only one that can take chain, so we better put chain there, and leather, uh, leather, and leather, which just gives us some more available slots. Someone's got to disarm traps, that better be the paladin. Um, and then we're just missing a couple of schools of the elemental magic, we definitely want air and water magic in here because they've got access to some spells that without without them you can't access parts of the world. Uh, so let's give our sorcerer air magic and our druid water magic. Yes, that all works out great. Okay, so we've got 50 points to allocate here and really, let's see. Um, I'm not going to try and min-max this, it's not really how I play. And plus, I don't know what half these stats mean anyway. I did do a big, bit of um, bit of searching. Uh, so might is basically damage, endurance is hit points, uh, speed um, affects your chance to be hit, I think. Uh, accuracy is your chance to hit. So those are, those are all kind of useful for everyone. Um, Okay, intellect is uh, governs the spell points for sorcerers, archers, and druids. So we need good intellect on uh, on those, since basically every character here is going to be casting spells. Let's try and max those out. Um, and then personality affects the spell points for clerics, druids, and paladins. Wait, druids are on both. Is that right? Okay. Um, well, uh, that may be wrong, but let's just let's try this. Hey, there's no wrong answers, right? Uh, so we can probably get rid of intellect and personality on some of the others. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we can put some points into things like speed. Your speed is really low. Don't like that. Let's make sure. We have some reasonable stuff. Look, I couldn't even find out what it does. Maybe it affects chance to uh, disarm a trap and things like that. Accuracy, we definitely need more of. There. Um, I really don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, let's, we've got four more points. Where are we gonna put them? Let's give some more look to the Paladin and the Druid. I really don't know what I'm doing here, okay. Uh, all right, yeah, we also need to figure out which um, employees of New World Computing we're going to look like. Uh, we've got a few different ones here, uh, some better than others, mostly guys. Um, all right, so the, each of these have a have a, um, an associated sound set, and just for novelty of not hearing the same sounds as I've heard when I played it before, I'm going to pick four um, four um, portraits that. I haven't played before. I'm pretty sure I haven't played before. So let's uh, choose a uh, sort of eye patch there for a paladin. Uh, we'll name him Hewitt. Uh, a druid. Uh, we could go for Mustachio there. Um, let's call him Digby. Um, let's have a cleric be. Let's go for sideburns. Okay, and his name will be 
Oswald and the sorcerer. Let's um, go for her, and her name is Marissa. Okay, so we've got there. There's our party build. I have no idea how viable this is. Hopefully, it's not going to penalize us too much for not reading wikis and and and, and the like. Um, all right, let's just jump into it with those characters. I think. Okay, so we, here's our starting inventory. We get inventory based on the skills we picked, and they're useful. So he likes swords. Uh, we also get a spell book that we can learn. So our paladin here uh, can learn bless. Okay. Let's do that straight out. Uh, we can make a potion of mana as well. And here's the letter. Okay, so I'll I'll come back to this once we've done inventory because this is uh, this is story and it's going to be our introductory quest and things. Uh, okay, a druid, leather armor, a staff that does a little more damage than the thing he started with. Oh, we got a speed ring. Let's give that. I missed the ring here as well. That's a fire resistance ring. Once we're given that. Cold beam and magic arrow are our spells here uh, that we can learn and cast. Okay, a mace. Uh, first aid, very useful. That's going to be... Oh, we've got a speed ring as well. We've got some pretty nice starting gear here. Sometimes you get um, jewellery that doesn't have any, any enchantments on there at all. Uh, we may have to shuffle that around and stuff later, but let's just allocate the stuff to the, the people that it started with for now. Uh, a dagger, 2d2 versus 1d3. Mm, let's go for 2d2. Uh, and a ring that doesn't actually have to do anything. Uh, okay. okay. Flame arrow, because you've got fire magic, and static charge, because you've yes. got air magic. And that is that, in terms of our characters. Now, uh, alright, let's, uh, let's get into the game. Okay. I should say, first of all, um, I'm installing, uh, I've installed, um, one of the user patches for this, which adds a whole load of features. It's, uh, it's Greyface's patch. And I'll put a link in the uh, show notes. Um, so it's had, it's had um, it's had a mouse look. Um, it's uh, there's a high speed mode. We've I've managed to rebind the keys from, from annoying cursor keys and things spread all over the keyboard to things that really are all under the left hand. Um, so you can play with mouse and keyboard quite nicely. Uh, and there's a whole load of other features as well, um, none of which come into mind right now, but I'm sure I'll get to them uh, later on. Okay, um, now one of the things... No, alright, let's let's go, let's do story stuff. So, currently we're holding this letter here, which we can uh, read if we... Oops, do that. There's the, it helps if I press the right mouse button. Um, so this is a letter to someone called Solman. From someone called Zen Effects. All right, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna fill in some of the backstory here, and let's see if I can hit some of the major points. Because not everything that you need to know to start this game was really made clear in the cinematic and in the narration. All right, basic story: these four characters three years ago were in a village called Sweetwater when it was attacked by those red devil things. They fought and they escaped, um, and they were trained uh, by this guy, Falagar. They were trained up as adventurers, and they have found their way here. Right In the meantime, the king, King Roland, uh, is investigating the disappearance uh, of a lord, Lord Kilburn, uh, and he is uh, following the trail, and he comes across an army of these devils. So he pursues them, lays traps for them, and virtually defeats them. Uh, but ends up the some of them get away, and they bring back a huge army of them. So okay, he's on the run now. He's on the run back to a city that he can fortify. And he is sending messages uh, to his uh, to his council um, to send reinforcements, uh, to send an army, basically. He's got 500 men. He needs 25,000 men to attack these guys. 
Uh, so he uh, fortifies up in uh, in a place called Kriegspire, uh, and he's he sends uh, he's he's sending letters and passing them to his advisor Sulman, his trusted advisor, uh, to send back to Castle Ironfist for reinforcements for the war. Sulman, unbeknown to the king, is a traitor, and he is working with a doomsday cult called the Temple of Bar who are working to overthrow the kingdom. Um, okay, they, they, they're looking, to, they're looking to, to undermine the, uh, the reign of the king. Uh, they're, they're putting a grand plan in motion to gain power. So our characters wipe out some goblins in a camp, and they, found, they find, by accident, the body of Sulman with King Roland's letters undelivered on the body, and then also this letter, mm. this letter, there we go, uh, which is a letter to Sulman from someone in the temple, basically talking about the 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 um, this grand plan, talking about the treachery, promising Sulman uh, a, a role in the new order. We also have in here instructions to Sulman to turn this letter over to a guy named Andover Potbello in New Sorpical, who, we'll, get, who uh, we'll go and see in a minute. So currently we're the only ones who know about this treachery. We don't know. No one else knows where uh, what happened to the king. We have important information here that we need to convey. But first of all, we can get some gold by handing this letter to the guy in the inn here. Hello, come on in. So if we do that, there we go. So we've got a thousand uh, gold from for, for doing that. Now I'm just I'm minimizing what we're doing here because I want to do something that's going to make the introductory stages of this game quite a lot easier, which is get everyone bows. Uh, this is something that really is highly recommended in this game, but we can't do it on this map. We're going to have to make a slight diversion out to Castle Iron Fist to get the bow skills and to be able to buy bows. But but unlike magic in this game, ranged is really powerful in this game. Malay is just bad. Um, unlike magic, though, which depletes mana, uh, archery just doesn't deplete anything. It's infinite ammo. Uh, it's so you can just pick stuff off, especially uh, sort of uh, the stuff that's you know that's not very powerful. The the, the junk mobs, the trash mobs. So we are going to make, uh, before we get any further, we are going to make a brief diversion out to Castle Ironfest and do that. So let's do that right now. Need a ride? If we go to the, the stable here, we can Hitch up the horses. take a carriage to Castle Ironfest. And here we are. We can... All right, so we... Uh, let's see. Quest log. There we are. So we've got Sulman's letter. We want to show him, uh, show the regent who is currently. Um, okay, so the so King Roland had a, had a wife, uh, but she's out of the picture because she's uh, overseas um, for the funeral of her father, um, and a son who was too young to to, to reign. So the regent is currently uh, sitting on the throne. We are going to go and tell the regent. Master Nikolai Ironfist uh, about the contents Vincent of this letter and see what he says. There we go. So yeah, that gives us uh, about another five thousand gold, which is really, really useful uh, as an introductory uh, thing. It will be able to get us equipped, and then we'll go back to New Sorpical and start getting quests and stuff. Yeah, we're sort of doing things in a slightly... It's probably not the natural order of, uh, of, the, of the game, but those bows will come in really, really handy. So it's worth the, the side trip. Okay, we've got a couple more horseshoes here. These are really useful. Uh, horseshoes, which are normally found around in stables, they will give more skill points to our characters. Uh, skill points being just about everything. Okay, in this house, you. we can join Berserkus Fury, uh, which is a mercenary guild. 
Thank you. Absolutely do that. And then here, there's Berserker's Fury. Ready to learn something new. And we should be able to train everyone for 500 that apiece will be useful. in that bow. Will be useful. Great. Okay, so that is a prerequisite to be able to hold a bow. And we actually need four bows, which we might be able to find in here. Let's see. Well, there's three regular bows. Hey, we've got some better ones here as well. Uh, okay. There, we've got one better one. Okay, so uh, who's going to be... Uh, let's take the Paladin can take our best one. There, there, there. Okay. So now we've got four characters, all with bows, which means they've got unlimited ranged um, stopping power. Okay, and they'll miss most of the time, but it's so much better than just flinging spells and missing most of the time anyway, and depleting mana. So let's go back to New Sorpigal. And we can pick up some quests. Uh, okay, first we go back to this guy here. I think he has a quest for us. So this is a follower of the Temple of Bar. They're a doomsday cult. Most of their followers don't, I think, know that. Um... But they're, uh, they're definitely growing in influence at this point. Uh, and um, we'll, we'll see rather a lot of them, I think. Right, this person thinks that these devils are just misunderstood. Bar says that they are our friends. Yeah, well, this... This guy seems a little brainwashed, but uh, he does have a quest for us, let's see. So there's uh, an abandoned temple... Uh, to the northwest, and they left a candelabra. Um, so there's a quest for us to go back in. Uh, and fetch some stuff. One of the things about this, uh, well, we'll see soon, but one of the things about the, the, the dungeons in this game is they tend to be huge, and they tend to be just floods and floods of monsters. I need your help. Um, so I think that's not going to make a particularly entertaining let's play some of these some of these so I think I'm, what I'm going to try and do is fast forward through them a little we'll see how that works okay Frank Fairchild there's a lot of clues and stuff get dropped into I'm not going to keep track of these because I would have to write them all down and slow things down uh, let's see Ah, someone's been uh, kidnapped by the Shadow Guild. Um, okay, although it doesn't say where. Right, and then we also have, let's see, uh, Goblin Watch. Right, I'll keep called Goblin Watch, just south of town. Uh, figure out the combinations to the to the lock on a very important door leading to the caves below the dungeon level, and we have a key. Thank you. And we've also got a, a bounty on an Agar's monster. I think that might be randomised. I don't know if we'll see one of those, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, oh, one of the things this this patch um, adds is quick save and quick load, which is mighty useful. Let's we'll press F five there. And we saved. Let's see if we can kill something. So here's Goblin Watch up here on this hill. If the draw distance lets us see it. And there's the bridge out to... Okay, right. I see goblins. I see goblins approaching us. So we'll drop into turn-based mode. And because we all have bows, we can just keep hammering the quick attack. Now... Until they get a little closer, at least. Hmm. And hopefully we can put them down before they get anywhere near us. Yeah, that seems pretty good. So this will be very, very time-consuming and annoying otherwise. Uh, let's loot stuff. A bit of gold there. Oh, another one. Really? The AI and pathfinding and stuff in this game. Pretty primitive. Ooh, apples. Apples um, are useful for travel. 
strangely. Those are those rations are uh, are the things that are the the, the the finite resource that gets consumed in uh, resting and I think travel as well. I might be wrong about the travel. What do we have in the crate? Mm, some gold. I don't know. An unidentified helm, ring, and dagger. Let's try a cleric ah. on those things. Okay, we got a plus two helm. A ring that he can't identify ah. either, and a dagger. Let's put the helm on Adruid Hardeman. There we go. And we've got another fire oh, interesting. I don't know. Ah. Well, it's only as good as the bows we already have. Okay, so let's pick some more of these apple trees. So I can walk around the village. Uh, this, I think, yeah, that's the trainer. Oh, hey, we can level up. Okay. Well, yeah, definitely. Okay. To level three, in fact. Okay. Okay. So leveling up will get us more skill points. Uh, and if we drop into the skill screen, here we are. We've actually got twelve skill points to allocate for each character here, from the horseshoes and the leveling. So we can um, put some points into some more stuff. Um, for example, he couldn't identify something, so let's at least put one more point into identify item. Uh, we can definitely put some into bow for each of them, I think, since we're going to be leaning on that quite heavily. But our healer should also get some more body magic, because that's going to be our healing spells. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's no harm at all in upping Disarm Trap. Uh, but let's also go for... Well, what's he going to be using? I have no idea what Spirit Magic actually does. Let's keep the points just in case. Definitely want some more Water Magic there. Um, and let's go for some Air Magic there. We haven't actually... Um, we haven't actually applied any um, default spells, so let's do that for each of them. Okay, so we've got Bless or Spirit Arrow. Let's give a Spirit Arrow okay. as the ready spell. Uh, there we go. Um, magic Arrow, Awaken, Cold Beam, Magic Arrow. Okay. First aid, okay. definitely, for our Cleric. And... Wizard Eye is quite useful to see to, to get a radar of uh, of enemies. But it's only really useful once, so let's um yes. let's uh ready more of a combat spell there. Hello. You can go in each of these houses. There's trainers are Hello. spread around all over the place and you either have to refer to a map or remember where they are. Neither of which is particularly ideal. Uh, we had some stuff we wanted to identify, didn't we? Somewhere. Didn't we? I guess not. I thought there was something we couldn't identify, but I can't see it now. Um, okay. Let's head on over this bridge. And towards the abandoned temple. And I think we'll leave it outside the door of that temple for this first episode. But first we need to find our way to it, so let's try that. Okay, so oh there's a well there's a caster up there as well as goblins. Let's hope we are not gonna get too Yeah. They're just dropping like flies here. Yeah, this blue goblin there, this palette shifted blue goblin. As well as these red suited guys, yeah, they, they're a little ranged. So, uh, uh, kill everything with bows uh, idea may not be universally applicable. Uh, what, what? Oh, great. Oh, why did I not see that going on? I'm not particularly attentive, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's fall back onto this bridge and hope they follow us. Luring them into town sounds, seems like it should be a good idea, but 
It really doesn't do any good at all. Oh, come on, are you kidding? We're just going to stand there. If that, well, I'm not going to have any fun at all. We'll just pick him up across the river then. There we go. And loot the bodies for gold. Ah, there's one guy still left up there. The sounds for coming in and out of um, of turn-based mode in this game are swiftly going to get extremely annoying. Uh, I don't think there's any way to turn them off. I do apologize. Okay, we got a green potion there. Yeah, resistances. Ah, a staff. A spear, a hammer, a sword, which may be better than the sword we've got already. We'll check that in a second. Um, and also a couple of magic potions. I don't know. Those guys a crossbow that's pretty generic, I think. Okay. Now uh, we are going to go back, um, even though I said we were going to leave it there because we lost a lot of health there. Um, I'm going to press F2 here, and one of the nice features of this patch is that I will double the speed of the entire game, enemies and all, but it makes travel a lot faster. Okay, so they that one restores spell points, which is not all that useful. Oh, that one's a temporary uh, boost to might. That's really not going to hurt at all. And then this one... Yeah, here we are. This is the one that restores hit points, so we can basically get all the way back up there. And we'll leave it just outside here. Right. Well, thanks for watching. Next up, we will uh, enter this abandoned temple and look at that candelabra that the Temple of Bar Follower sent us in here for. Well, thanks very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another episode soon.